Will the right of a person over an asset become void if there was an underlying act of fraud that caused the non-compliance of the obligation? We will be reviewing the case of Gazetaya v. Mabasa with General Register Number 148147, promulgated on the 16th of February, year 2007. Who has the better right? The present owner who acquired the property by means of deception and fraud? Or the one whose rights were called off because of the former? To begin, Aditha Mabasa's father, Benaventura Mabasa, was granted a homestead patent located in Lala, Lano del Norte, on lots 279, 272, and 972. He then mortgaged these lots to secure a loan from DBP but failed to pay. As a result, the bank foreclosed and sold the lots at the public auction with them, DBP, being the highest bidder. Upon the death of Benaventura Mabasa, Respondent Aditha Mabasa was authorized by her siblings to negotiate with DBP to repurchase the lots, which could be reacquired through a deed of conditional sale for 25,875 pesos. Subsequently, the respondent entered into an agreement with Sabas Casataya, in which he takes possession of the lots for 20 years and that it may be developed into a fish pond, as well as for the latter to pay respondent's obligation to DBP. With this, the respondent received 10,000 pesos aside from the 25,000 pesos which Kasataya paid DBP on Mabasa's behalf. Upon showing Mabasa that they, the Kasatayas, have already settled with DBP, the two entered into another agreement denominated as Deed of Sale of Fish Pond Lands with Rights to Purchase. Eight years after the execution of the deed, Mabasa learned that Sabas Kasataya stopped paying DBP which resulted in the respondent's rights to repurchase the lots to be called off and allowing DBP to have the properties up for bid in a public auction, where the Gazetayas participated and got the highest bid. The respondent, Adita Mabasa, then filed a complaint to RTC for reconveyance of title of lands with damages against the Gazetayas. She claimed that Sabas Gazetaya intentionally withdrew from his commitment to pay DBP to first, revoke her right to repurchase the lots, and second, subject the properties to another public auction where they could bid the highest. The court ruled in favor of Edita Mabasa, finding that the Gazetayas defrauded her so the petitioner could acquire the lots at the public auction and ordering the Gazetayas to But the Gazetayas denied the allegations and argued that the deed of conditional sale was rendered ineffective by DBP's refusal to accept payments thereon. The Gazetayas filed an appeal to the Court of Appeals but failed to provide evidence to support their claim that DBP indeed rejected payments from Sabas Gazetaya. They committed a breach of trust amounting to fraud which would warrant an action for reconveyance. Although the respondent is not the legal owner of the disputed lots, she has a better right than the petitioner on the following grounds. Number one, the deed of conditional sale executed by DBP vested on her the right to repurchase the lots. Her right to repurchase them would have subsisted had the Casatayas not defrauded her. The final verdict is that the court is in favor of Edita Mabasa, finding that the Gazetayas deceived the respondent in order to acquire the disputed lots. The petitioner, Jesse Gazetaya, cannot discredit the deed of conditional sale and should be reminded that DBP revoked the respondent's right to repurchase the lots under the said deed because of the deceitful maneuverings they have employed. The incidental fraud overthrows the presumption that the public bidding was attended with regularity. It does not vest any valid title of the properties to the petitioner for it was but the result of his and his father's fraudulent course of action. Consequently, fraud is a ground for reconveyance. As a final point, the court takes significant note of the fact that the respondent's father originally acquired the lots through a homestead grant. The Commonwealth Act 141, or known as the Public Land Act, aims to confine and preserve to the homesteader and his kin the homestead lots. It is stated in the CA's dissertation that courts should lend a stout shoulder to help keep a homestead and the homesteader's family. For the reality that homesteaders and their families are generally in the lower stratum of life. 
and most likely when they alienate the homestead, it is out of dire necessity. Costs against petitioner Jessica Sataya.